because you beat I, about the bush. You did not go around in circles like many men do. <laughs> Annoying, like you know, you better say what you want. <laughs> so he just yeah. said it. Yeah, he said it. And yeah, of course, as a good girl, yeah. as much as it was just the previous night that God had assured me, I told him I would pray about it <laughs> and get back to him. <laughs> of Zion, forget about your prayer partners. Oh, there comes a time when you don't need no prayer nobody. There comes a time when you lie prostrate before the Lord and you're the only one that can call him in a way nobody else can. There comes a time when you can touch the hem of his garment when there is a crowd like this, but he knows somebody touched me. We are not going to wait until the devil attacks us. We are going to the camp of the devil to terrorize, to pull down, to scatter everything that he has erected against our destiny. Time of warfare is not the time of jealousy, malice, and all kinds of murmuring. No, it's a time to be focused. I came to tell you you need a personal God that you can say but oh, and silence every work of Satan in your life in the name of Jesus. Good evening viewers, you're welcome to Woman Without Limits. In case you didn't know, that's exactly who you are. My name is Reverend Kathy Kuna and it's such a delight. Know that we love you and our desire is to see you lifted up, raised up by God, because my mandate is to raise up the standard among women and to let you know that nothing can limit you but you yourself. Now a lot of you men are watching and you're welcome to watch, don't worry about it. Because at the end of the day, we want every one of us lifted up by God to become who he created us to be. And listen, we've been bringing some wonderful stories. Different women and men alike have been just giving us such amazing insights to see where they are coming from and what God can do with a willing vessel. And that could be your story. God can lift you up and make you become a, a person to reckon with, even in your generation. And tonight is going to be ah, so special. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be extraordinary. Because we are having the deputy president's wife. I want you to welcome with me Her Excellency Rachel Ruto. <laughs> Oh, Her Excellency Rachel Ruto, you are so welcome. Thank you. It is so beautiful to see you today. Thank you, my sister. And you look amazing. <laughs> Do you know when, when people see you, they, they, they keep asking, how old is she? <laughs> you know, because you look so young. I appreciate Thank you very much. Yes. yes. You are absolutely welcome to Woman Without Limits. Mm. You are an, a woman without limits. You have really, really exemplified Christ in this nation. And we totally honor you and what you have done and are doing in our nation. Thank you. So basically, what we want first and foremost for you to do, you know, th these are daughters of Zion, women without limits. They are all seated here. Yes. And uh, they, they are excited to be in this program today. Amen. Amen. 
<laughs> so you put some smiles. You're too serious. Eh? <laughs> you're still looking like. So, you, <laughs> so I'm saying this to ease you up. Eh? Please just take it easy and, and be comfortable. So we, we want to find out uh, first and foremost who uh, Her Excellency is. Before you are Her Excellency, you are Rachel Ruter. And we just want to find out who that is. Okay. Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, my sister, I want to say thank you very much for mm -hmm. this invitation. I yes. don't take it for granted. Yes. And even all the daughters of Zion that are here this evening, thank you very much for coming. Yes, as you've heard, my names are uh, Rachel Ruto. Yes. Uh, some people call me Ryle. Yes. Yeah. Wow. The same. <laughs> <laughs> Ryle yes. sounds good. <laughs> Actually, that is the official one. Okay, <laughs> right. Yes. Wow. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, I was uh, born many years ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, won't, we won't even go into those details. <laughs> yes, in one small village yes. uh, called Likuyani okay. in western province then, okay. which is now Kakamega County. Okay. Um, my parents were farmers. They are still farmers. Mm. Uh, I went to the same village school yeah. called Likuyani Primary School. Okay. Uh, from Likuyani, I went to Butere Girls High School. Wow. Okay. <laughs> in Kakamega County, yeah. where I did both my O level mm -hmm. and my A level studies. Yeah. Uh, when I left Butere, I proceeded to Kenyatta University, mm. where I did a degree in education. So I'm actually mm. supposed to be a teacher. Wow. <laughs> Wow. And do yeah. you teach at all? Well, a little bit, maybe what I do now with the women, because yes. I do a lot of training and capacity building. Yes. So I think that training has gone a long way to help me in what I'm doing currently. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't teach for long. I actually taught just for like my teaching practice. Okay. But uh, I was posted to a school that was very far. That's why I didn't go to teach, mm. because then I was planning to get married. Hey, okay. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I think that is. So I, I started to get a job in Nairobi yeah. where I've been working. Uh -huh. And at one point, I resigned to take care of my children yeah. because of, you know, the pressure of balancing, you mm. know, work and being a mother and being a wife. Yeah. Yeah, that is how my life has been. Mm. But the beauty is that I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ when I was in Butere Girls as a Form oh. 1 student. Oh, my. <laughs> um, form one. Yes, when I was in form one. Actually, I had the advantage that I had been brought up uh, in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. My parents went to the AIC church. Yeah. I went to Sunday school in the AIC church. At least I knew the Bible. I was very good at reading the Bible. But I hadn't really known that difference of really giving your life to Jesus Christ. Yes. So it was, one, uh, it was in one challenge weekend meeting mm. that used to take place in high school when I was in Form 1. Actually, the first term that uh, some people came to preach to us. Mm -hmm. And I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh. And I have never regretted it. Amen. Yeah. I think wow. it's, it's the best thing that have ever happened to me. Oh and uh, it's really, it really propelled me to other levels. Yeah. Yes. As in from Form 1, yes. you stuck and held on to God. Sure. And love the Lord till now. Yes. Oh, that is so, <laughs> that is so awesome. Yes. May somebody that is, that is watching know that you're never too young yes. to surrender your life to the Lord. Yeah. That is amazing. So that's where you're coming from. Yes, that's where I'm coming uh -huh. from. So you, what you're saying, uh, uh, Her Excellency, is that you came from a very um, uh, humble background? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. Actually, my parents uh, were just farmers yeah. in, in the settlement scheme of Soy, the yeah. village of Likuyani. Uh -huh. I went to the primary school there, and mm. uh, what I loved about the primary school I went was that it's the, it was in the schemes. Okay. So we had many tribes, you know, we had Kikuyus, we had Luos, okay. we had Luyas, we had Kisis. Yeah. I mean, everybody was there. Yeah. In fact, we didn't really speak our vernacular, but we spoke Kiswahili then and oh. English in our primary school. When you were growing up? Yes, when we were growing up. Uh -huh. So it, it was a good primary school, yeah. very humble. Yeah. We went to school without shoes, like many people. It's, no, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Sure. Oh, is somebody <laughs> listening? <laughs> Is I'm somebody watching. <laughs> In fact, without I think shoes, I seriously put on shoes now when I went to Form One, 
because you know it was a requirement that you have to go to high school with shoes, but it was normal to run. We ran to school. It was good. We enjoyed it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what people say that it's not where you begin. Yes. It's so true, isn't it? Yes, it's You true. started from a mighty long way. Yes. And now here you are. Yes. You know, I mean, honestly, God is a good God. He is. And so you, you, you loved him from, from one and all that, yeah? Yes. Do you have any siblings? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I have siblings. Uh, we are a family of eight. Mm -hmm. We've lost a brother now. I oh. have five, four sisters plus myself, five. Yeah. And then now it were three brothers, but now we are left with two brothers. Okay, yes. okay. Yeah. And you said your parents are still there? Well, my mom is late, okay. but my dad is there. Oh, your dad is still yes. there? Okay. In the yeah. same place you grew up? Actually, we no longer live there. What happened, mm. uh, it was unfortunate that in the clashes of 1992, mm. we were then forced uh, to move out of uh, Kakamega mm. County because of the, you know, the tribal animosity that was there. Yes, so yes. We so you also suffered that. Yes, we have. Yeah, <laughs> oh my. We have. Uh -huh. Now we live in Wazingishu County. Yes. Yes, in a okay. village called uh, Sugoi. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you go out of uh, this country at all for studies, or you finished in KU and you were good? No, I've never been out of this country for studies. For I studies. I finished in KU, went to work. And, yeah. yeah. So, so you said when you were in KU is when you were thinking now about marriage. <laughs> Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I was in KU, that is when uh, I, I started dating. Yes. I met a wonderful man of God then. <laughs> and when they were trying to post me to tort, I couldn't see how I could go there and leave and him. And leave him? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you met him that long ago? Actually, I have known him from childhood. Whoa, oh yes. my God. Yes. What? Yes. You were childhood sweethearts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may not put it like that, but at least I knew him from church again. Yeah. Yeah, you know, from the AIC church. Yeah. As much as we were in the western, but uh, uh, county, we were in uh, Kakamega County, yeah. we were in Wazingishu County. Yes. But you know, there were, youth, there were these youth camps mm -hmm. that used to come in the month of August. Yes. Where they used to bring, you know, AIC youths from a very big region. Okay. So uh, I saw him yeah. then there yeah. and he was active in the things of God. I yeah. saw him acting. Yeah. And then later on I got to know he came from a particular region. So I, I knew him somehow. Oh so <laughs> yeah, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> somehow. Yes. And then in the process is when he approached you? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, in the process he, he approached me. Yeah. Yeah. And you kicked off and became <laughs> You married almost immediately? Yes, or immediately after Kenyatta uh, graduation. What? Yes. So you married as a very young girl? I actually got married at 23. Is that young? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but it's been nice. Yeah. I've never regretted that I got married early. I hear people saying, oh, I've not had my part of life. But sometimes I wonder what life is this that yeah, you really want else? to have. Yeah. I think it's really good to have that, that, that life in your, in your marriage. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. But we got our children early enough. Yeah. Our last born is 13. When you see me work with my daughters yeah. and my sons, you know, you think we are age mates. So oh I think my, it's oh good to get yeah. these children early also yes. in life. Yes. yes, and you have six of them. I have six of them. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What are their ages? Um, uh, our daughter June just turned 25 uh -huh. in the month of June. Yeah. She was born in June. Yeah. Nick turned 23. Mm -hmm. Charlene is 20. Uh, Stephanie is 16. George is 14. And Kul is turning 13 this month. Oh my God. That's such a blessing. Yes. How does it feel to have a big, nice family? Actually, it's really, really nice. Yeah. You know, like some of them are out. I have some at home. Mm. You know, any, any, at one, any one time, at least I have uh, children at home. Somebody at home. You know, you know, I know like you, Pastor, with your two or three. Oh, <laughs> but I know. I know you have many spiritual <laughs> ones. <laughs> I know, and you yeah. know what, we were just looking and thinking, wow, mm. this big house, and yeah. everybody, because my last one is 13, yes. he's going to be 13 in a week, yes. so we were looking and thinking, ah, this big house, and now they are almost all gone, you I know. know. Anyway, it's a Jesus blessing. Is Lord. Yeah, Jesus yeah, it's is a blessing. Lord. <laughs> but you know, you are a spiritual mom to many. Yeah, so absolutely. Well, it's good. Yeah, that, yeah, that makes it much better. Yeah. Okay, so you married young, got your children, enjoyed life together. Yes. Now, you, 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 when you 
first met your husband, did you ever think ever at all hmm. that he would end up in politics and, and you know, you would end up in that direction? Did you ever think that? I, thank you. <clears throat> I, actually, I did, I did not think he would, he would end up in politics. Yeah. Because you hear, I started seeing him when he was in, in, in the youth yes. choir. Acting. He was acting yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. So I just looked at him like any other boy, you know, any other young man. And uh, I didn't imagine because I didn't see the potential. But I remember one time uh, during our courtship, mm. he actually posed a question to me and mm. told me, do you know you are getting married to a politician? So uh, I wondered, I was like politician, See, where is yeah. this coming from? Yeah. I, you know, those days, it was the days when we used to, f politicians were very far, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, uh, the people that used to represent particular constituencies, like, were very few, yeah. because the constituencies were very, very large mm -hmm. and very vast. So I was like, really? Uh, you you can't, couldn't see no it. Way. So I just put it aside and yeah. I was like, this is just a, a joke, you know, yeah. maybe just pulling my leg, you no, know, nothing like this yes. will happen. Yeah. But uh, I know uh, during our courtship, one thing I really appreciated was the fact that, uh, you know, it, his forecast to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember, just to go back a little bit, Pastor, just to tell us our history on how we met, just apart from the, from the church thing, is, uh, I, you know, during that time, I really started praying for a life partner, you know, mm -hmm. like many of us who do. Mm -hmm. And I remember I used to be in fellowship with other sisters, you know, and everybody. You know, during that age, you're wondering, oh, so what next? Yes. I was praying one night, and uh, as much as I knew him, God gave me his two names that what? I would get married to him. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what? I was actually praying when I was doing my teaching practice. And you know, the way you're asking God, God, so, you know, what next, what next? And yeah. the Lord told me, your husband is so-and-so. What? Yeah. So when I woke up in the morning, it was very clear. That is not enough. Yeah. I was doing my teaching practice in Kesup Girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, what used to happen was that uh, we used to stay two ladies in, in one house. Mm. After finishing my lessons, like just before lunch break, I yeah. went to my house and I met my roommate. She was uh, making lunch already. Mm. That time I was learning how to play the guitar. So I told her, I can see you've already finished cooking. Let me go to the neighbors and, you know, play the guitar. Mm. As I just started playing my guitar, she came and told me, you have a visitor. So I was like, I wonder, I asked her, is it the students? Because then I was almost the age of the students and they liked following me to ask me questions. Yes. But something told me, that is William. When I went, I actually found him seated in our house. <laughs> So that was a confirmation. Yeah. Yeah, God confirmed it. That the name, and yes. then he brought and Then him. he brought himself, and yet yeah. he was not even supposed to be in Eldred. He was actually supposed to have reported back to campus yeah. in Nairobi University. Yeah. Yeah. So after a while, then he stated his case. Oh, that was then actually there. Came. Actually, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> And it was, so, it was so interesting that I had a free afternoon, you know, the way after lunch you're supposed to be going back. Yeah. So my roommate goes back to mm. teach and I'm left with yeah. this man. I don't know what to do with him. <laughs> and I'm hoping he can leave. <laughs> then I'm very uncomfortable. I'm washing utensils in the kitchen. I'm excusing myself. I'm yeah. supposed to be setting exams. And yeah. he tells me, I just want to tell you one thing. Mm. Then I leave. And that is the day he proposed. What? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Bit about the bush, he did not go around in circles like many men do, <laughs> annoying, like you know, you better say what you want. <laughs> so he just yeah. said it, yeah, he said it, and yeah. of course, as a good girl, yeah. as much as it was just the previous night that God had assured me, I told him I would pray about it <laughs> and get back to him. <laughs> oh, oh my god, we'll be right back after this break. And I, I love prayer. Mm. I love fasting. I just love to communicate to God because yeah. when God gives me the direction to go, then that is the direction. Like, yes. you know, when he gave me my husband, he gave me through prayer. Yes. You know, I was praying and he told me, this is the man. You know, I have never doubted. I'll never doubt. So it is also in all the other things mm. that, you know, through prayer, when God speaks to me, then I know this is the way to go. I came to tell you.
you, daughter of Zion, forget about your prayer partners. Oh, there comes a time when you don't need no prayer, nobody. There comes a time when you lie prostrate before the Lord and you're the only one that can call him in a way nobody else can. There comes a time when you can touch the hem of his garment when there is a crowd like this, but he knows somebody touched me. We are not going to wait until the devil attacks us. We are going to the camp of the devil to terrorize, to pull down, to scatter everything that he has erected against our destiny. Time of warfare is not the time of jealousy, malice, and all kinds of memory. No, it's a time to be focused. I came to tell you, you need a personal God that you can say, but I and silence every work of Satan in your life in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Even though the Lord had told you, Even though the Lord had told you knew me. this one. Me, I'm not showing him. At I was waiting. At I'm just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that oh. that that's how it was. Yeah. Mm. Then you said, okay, fine. And you know, after a while, of course, you you said yes. Yes. So that was then. Uh, I think uh, at the beginning of our, our semester. Mm -hmm. I think it was towards the end of the year. Mm. Uh, he came to campus, mm. and then uh, I did my teaching practice. I finished, came back to KU, yes. and uh, it was then when I came back to Nairobi that we met again, and I told him, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and soon after that, you were married. Yes, now we waited, I think, that was like, I think, in second year. Yeah. Yeah, we waited to finish, okay. and then uh, we got married. Your parents were okay? They were okay with it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> But what you never saw was a politician coming up, even though he no, told you. Yes. You couldn't see it. No, no, no. I mm. didn't see it. I mm. didn't see that. Mm. I didn't see him as a politician. Mm. I just saw him as a good husband, mm. a good father to my children. Yes. You know, this family that you have in your mind, yeah. that you just have to, you just want to have a quiet life, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, go to church, yeah. you know, go visiting, visit friends. Yeah. I didn't see a politician. Mm. But then towards, uh, I think, uh, 1996, mm. I saw him get interested so much with the development projects back at home. And you mm. know, I kept asking him, why are you doing all this? Mm. It's like, you know, you know, God has blessed us. Mm. You know, we are in this, we are in Nairobi. You know, yeah. we need to give back to society. Oh, I was mm. like, okay, sour, yeah. sour, you yeah. give back to society. Yeah. <laughs> Little did I know that it was not long that yeah. now I started him, uh, I started seeing him now, you know, going for these serious harambes. Mm. The next thing I knew, he was like, he was vying to become the vice chairman of Kanu yes. in the location there. Yes. So I knew now things were, we are, bad. We are deep. <laughs> we are getting deeper. <laughs> we are getting deeper in this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it was in 1997 that mm. he now uh, vied for the uh, member of parliament yes. for Eldoret North constituency. Yeah. Yeah. And so now that time now you became okay. You said, okay, fine. Let's just flow. Yes, what I did was like I thought, really, because this is what he wants to do, there's no point of me trying to, you know, go to against it. Or, I yeah. said I'll just support him. Yeah. I actually took leave, wow. went home, wow. and campaigned. You did? Yes, I did. I did. Yes. Oh my God. That's <laughs> yeah, so in the elections awesome. of 1997. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I remember we had a daughter. My daughter was there nine months. Mm. I just packed the bags and we went to the village. Yeah. And I went around the constituency campaigning talking for to the him. women and the youth campaigning for him. And you know, we were very young because he was just 30 and I was 28. Yeah. So many people started saying he was not married. And you know, for politics, that's a problem. So I said, okay, mm. I'm going to show myself this yeah. is the wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and by yeah. the grace of God, you actually, he was elected member of parliament. Wow. Yeah. We, oh we thank God goodness. for everything. Yeah. Yes. So you you went ahead and just helped him to do all that he could. Yes, I As did. a virtuous woman. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> that's a virtuous woman right yes, there. that's what I because did. Because you see, you mm. hadn't even thought about him as mm. a politician, yes. yet you went all the way and just supported his vision yes. because that's what he saw. Sure. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Tell us now, because there's something that we remember you, everybody in this nation. Mm. I mean, we remember when the deputy president bowed down 
And the first thing when he got into it, when he got into power, what he said was that I thank God for my wife who would wake up in the middle of the night mm. and pray for me. Sure. And that is something that, I mean, it's in all our hearts, our minds, because that's something that will never leave us. Because mm. it's something we've never had before. As Kenyans, you know, it was the very first time yes. that a president, a deputy president would stand up and say something like that. What led you into prayer? How did you start prayer? Because I think the, the biggest impact you've made mm. in many lives is your prayer life. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> well, just like I said before, I, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ when I was a young girl. Mm. And of course, you know, as a Christian, you know, you get to learn about all these things, about prayer, mm. you know, about you know, listening from God, mm. about reading the Bible, Bible study and everything. Mm. So when I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ back in 1982, mm. you know, I started really engaging in prayer mm. because I realized that this is the only, the only way, you know, it's through prayer that that I'll be able to achieve whatever I want to achieve in life. Right. So even when I was, even before I got married, I spent a lot of time really praying. Okay. I remember when I finished my O level, you know, I was just making a simple prayer to God to help me pass. Mm. And I remember I used to spend time in the morning praying. I used to spend time at lunchtime praying, and I used to spend time in the evening praying. Wow. And of course, as a family, when I grew up, you know, I saw my mom and dad, you know, they used to gather us in the evening for mm. prayer and that mm. kind of thing. So I have actually learned to just, you know, you know, be able to listen and get God's direction in everything. Mm. So of course, you know, sometimes, you know, life can be very simple, easy, but you see, as you know, now we were in the political life. Yes. And, you know, I knew that, you know, without God, yeah. there is no way that, you know, would oh. make it in anything. And and of course, with all the things that faced us, the yeah. issue of the International Criminal Court, yes. you know, everything was against us. So yeah. I knew the only thing that would really avert all these things and give us victory mm. was prayer. Yeah. So just as you said, it's true. Mm. I spend a lot of time praying. Yes. And even now, I still spend a lot of actually time praying and fasting. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wow. pray for the family. We gather, you know, and then, of course, I, I love the midnight cry, you know, commanding the morning. Hey! So. <laughs> hey! Come on! Whoa! Yes. So, you know, because that is actually, you know, to start your day, you know, yeah. just commanding, you know, your day and, yeah. you know, telling the Lord to direct your ways. Mm. So, so I have done that a lot and I still do. Yeah. Prayer and fasting, you know, mm. sometimes, you know, my friends look at me because... I have prayed and fasted for 40 days. Like, actually, I remember last year alone, because of the issues that faced us and faced our country, mm. I prayed and fasted for 40 days twice. Wow. In January what? and towards the end of the year. And Somebody of felt course, the you know, you know, yeah. you know, you know yeah. someone, someone says, if you're fasting and you're not praying, it's hunger strike. Yeah, yeah, So we actually, true. you know, so I actually know mm. that even when I'm fasting, yeah. I need to pray. So yeah. I wake up in mm. the night to pray. I mean, every, almost every day, Pastor yeah. Kathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is wow. really, that is really the way for me. That is yeah. the way for us Christians. Yes. And, and one thing I have learned is that, you know, when I feel lazy mm. and, you know, sometimes, you know, there's this thing, you are tired, no you don't want to pray. Yeah. You know, that is when the Lord really wants to come through for you. Wow. So that is when you need to throw your blanket, you know. Especially, wow. you can imagine now, July, eh? yeah. it's very cold. Yeah. I was telling my friends, you know, sometimes when I want to wake up, you know, it's mm. so cold. Mm. But what do you do? You dress up and you go to fight. Because, you know, this, many of these things we have to fight in the spiritual. Before, hey. they, before they, they are My seen God. in the physical, you know, we have to hey. win them in the, in the spiritual. Yes. And it can only be through prayer. And mm. that is the only way God talks to us. Yeah. You know, like I keep saying, you know, you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do, you want to pick your phone, you know. How many SMSs do I have? Who has called me, you know? But it, it, would it oh be better God. if we picked, you know, the phone of heaven hey, and prayed with God, you Jesus, know? Jesus, yes. I mean, I, I, it's, it's not easy, wow. I can say, but yeah. God is helping me. Mm. And I, I love prayer. Mm. I love fasting. I just mm. love to communicate to God because yeah. when God gives me the direction to go, then that is the direction. Like, yes. you know, when he gave me my husband, he gave me through prayer. Yes. You know, I was praying and he told me, this is the man, you know? I have never doubted, I'll never doubt. So it is also in all the other things mm. that you know, through prayer, when God speaks to me, then I know this is the way to go. Yeah. You know, people can say, oh, maybe this is not the way. But when God has spoken to me, when God has spoken to us, then we go that way because we know we have the backing of the Lord Jesus hey, Christ. Hey, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my yeah. god. Oh my I actually god. look forward. Yeah. Mm, for I look forward to that midnight. Yeah. yeah. In fact, we always SMS each other with my friends, the ones we pray with. Mm. Sometimes we fall asleep, yeah. but still we wake up yeah. and we pray. Yeah. yeah. So I've, I've just uh, decided to commit my family, you mm. know, my husband, mm. my children, and our country, mm. and the Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, sometimes you're in the place of prayer and the Lord tells you, pray for the church. Yeah. You know, how yeah. else would you hear that yes, if yes. you are not in the place of prayer? You will not hear. You will not hear. You will not hear. Yes. So that propels you to pray some more. And to and, and you've brought up your children also in that way. Yes, of we, just, we, we try a lot. Mm. We actually usually have family prayer mm. um, uh, evenings, mm. but you know sometimes with homework and you know someone sleeping early and late. Mm. But we try. I mm. can't say that we are yet there, mm. but we try. Mm. Yes. You know what mm. I've seen, uh, honestly, Her Excellency, is that prayer answers things. Yes. There is nothing as powerful as prayer. And I believe with all my heart, without a shadow of doubt, mm. there is no way that they would have made it mm. as deputy president yes. and as president sure. without prayer. Sure. They would not have made it. Mm. Because the, if there is anything that the Christians did was to gather together and pray. Mm. And now, how much better when you're praying from in-house? It's true. You know, that I you're pushing you. him in prayer. You're mm. believing God in prayer. Mm. Let me ask you, did it scare you? When the ICC case came up, when all these things were around him, yet it was time for election? Yes, I, let me just say, uh, uh, Pastor Kathy, that mm. uh, when this ICC thing came mm. in the beginning, mm. for me I had a lot of peace mm. because, uh, you know, all those accusations, yeah. all the things that have been said mm. about my husband mm. are not true. It's true that people in this country lost their lives, yeah. people lost property. But you know the allegations they, 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 they said about yeah. him, you yeah. know, the meetings that he had in mm. our home in Sugoi. Mm. They talked about him ferrying almost, I don't know, 3,000 uh, uh, liters, uh, uh, cylinders of, uh, of gas to right. burn, burn the Kiamba church. Mm. They talked about many things. Mm. You know, I knew they were not true. So yeah. I had peace because... If there was anybody who was in the village, it was me. Mm. In fact, he was not at home. You know, because at that time he was doing the national uh, campaigns, yeah, you right. know, in, uh, the elections of 2007. Yes. So I'm actually the one who was uh, at home most of the time. Mm. And we really never had meetings like even the previous years. So number one, I had a lot of peace. Mm. And I knew mm. that the Lord... The Lord that we serve is a, faith, is a faithful God, yes. and he's, he, he was going to, you know, he was going to actually free him one yeah, day. Yeah. So I had never really gotten scared that that you mm. know that uh, he was guilty. I knew these things would come to pass, and I believe they are coming to pass. Yes. But of course, there was this anxiety, you know, this thing of now having to travel to Netherlands. Yes. You know, the children are here, and you know, they are I watching. To, they are watching. Yeah. You know, things that they are being told in school. Exactly. I remember my son coming home one time, mm. you know, crying. Mm. You know, because the children in school had told him that his father was going to be jailed. Mm. So what I decided to do was actually to concentrate and deal with the children because mm. I saw some of them actually going to breakdown. So we, we, we prayed with them and I started counseling them. In mm. fact, I remember one time somebody was recommending that we should have a family counsel and that kind of thing. Mm. But I, that was my greatest worry. It was actually the children. Because oh. for me and him, we knew, you know, of course, the truth that this thing would pass. Yeah. But you know, as they are walking around, you know, people looking at them and saying, your father, mm. you know, your father. And people can be mean. And people can be very, very mean. Yeah. Especially, yeah. I think, uh, they, they, they had been very mean to, to, to some of the, you know, some of the schools that my children, because some of them had been very mean. Mm. I remember even our big daughter, one time, June, you know, she was traveling to Australia to mm. do her master's. And, you know, there was this worry that, you know, you know, what am I going to be asked at the embassy? You know, mm. you know, what am I going to answer if they ask me and that kind of thing? But God has been faithful. Amen. Yeah, God has oh, been faithful. Wow. In all. So he's been prevailing all along. Yes. Yeah. You know, I remember my spiritual mother, Evangelist Teresa, one time said that you know you don't need to fight with lies yes the truth will always prevail exactly so at the end of the day you don't need to answer back and mm. do all manner of things mm. so what i love and, and thank god for you for is that you stuck 
onto prayer mm. and stuck onto God sure. and believed that he who began a good work in you mm. is faithful to complete it. Sure. And now we as a nation are celebrating the fact that he completed it, sure. you know, mm. <laughs> because sure. he, he emerged uh, mm. where he did. Sure. And so we are really so grateful that you're mm. holding on to mm. prayer. Sure. And what you're telling a young woman here mm. is that whether she's believing God for her husband, <laughs> Whether she's believing God for children, yes. whether she's believing God for victory, mm. she must get into prayer. Sure, sure. Yes. That's, that's what you're telling that's us. That's what I'm telling them. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling them. You know, mm. sometimes we struggle with very many things, mm. you know. Uh, it's not bad even to, to even to come to pastor for counseling, you yes. know. It's good to go to a friend to talk to. But I think the best counselor we have is the Holy Spirit in Jesus. Amen. You know, you know that is where you know that you have not gone wrong. Yeah. You know, you know, a singer sang, a singer sang and said uh, you know, tell your things to God. Mm. You know, don't tell your things to people. Yes. So that is what I would want to everything tell everybody to here. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. God is so direct. Mm. You know, I encourage everybody to get their things. You know, in the place of prayer. Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so prayer has done it for you. Sure. And it's still mm. doing it for you. It is. You're still getting up and calling up to God. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Wow. It surely <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> is. Okay. Yeah. So tell me, what are some of the challenges of now being married to the deputy president? <laughs> hey! <laughs> you know, I mean, suddenly, you know, we were, <laughs> we were now, yes. you know, just yesterday, you were Rachel. Yes. Now, uh. everybody has to really hey. <laughs> Her excellency and really, you know, they have to order their lives <laughs> when they are coming anywhere near. Yeah. What does that make you feel? Well, uh, I think nothing much for me has changed, Pastor. Yeah. Um, I'm still Rachel, <laughs> still doing the things that I did, but I only think the only thing that has changed is uh, a lot of uh, people around us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we don't have that space. Mm. You see, like now, if I have to come and visit you at yes. your home, you know, yeah. you know, maybe somebody has to. Uh, yeah. Who is this Pastor Kathy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think uh, for me, uh, I was a very free person. Yes. I used to go to the supermarket. Mm. I used to drive myself, visiting my friends, yes. you know, going to church alone. Yeah. But just that the only difference is that now there are too many people around us. Yes, so we have, have company, to come and too much check, company. <laughs> To yeah. check is everything okay here, <laughs> yeah, you know, before yeah. you go, you get here. Mm. But that's so amazing. Yeah. What I actually love so much about you is your level of humility. It, it's actually unbelievable. It's 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 breathtaking. Mm -hmm. And when I look at you and see the way you've carried yourself over the years, and look at you now, nothing has really changed. Sure. For somebody who knows you, they they're mm. like. Oh my God, you know, there are no heirs, you're just mm. the same, sure. you know. Mm. It's <laughs> mm. What keeps you like that? I think it's God. Mm. For me, I know that it's God who has brought us from where we were to where we are today. And mm. I give all the glory and honor to God. Amen. I don't take it that it's myself. Mm. So uh, nothing has changed really. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All the glory and honor unto God. Amen, amen. <laughs> and yeah. the children? Even them, nothing has changed much. Yeah. yeah, they also don't like a lot of attention, yeah. so they they just go on with their lives. Everybody just flows. Mm, everybody flows. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Is, isn't that amazing? Mm. Yeah. Now uh, there is a lot that you do with women. Yes. And I, I believe that uh, even for us to, to start on this program today yes. was really to get to here now, where you've been impacting women for a long time now, okay. even before you became, you know, you came to this position yes. that you're in right now as mm. the second lady yes. in this nation, you, you are always, you are always uh, raising up women and, and doing things in their lives. Would mm. you perhaps just, uh, you know, tell us and, and, you know, how it started? Yes. How did you think about it? Was it an inspiration mm. and all that? Okay, thank yeah. you very much. Mm. Like I told you, um, in the campaigns of 1997, mm. I went to support my husband, yes. you know, just to ask for votes from the women and the youth. Mm. So it was in that uh, uh, going around the constituency of Eldoret North 
that I realized that the poverty levels were very high. You, I had been brought up in the schemes where I think in the standards of the village were very okay. Mm. And uh, when I went around, I, I kept looking at situations and mm. especially women, you know, who looked very, you know, um, you know, malnutritioned, mm. you know, looking very emaciated and yeah. that kind of thing. I remember I was in one meeting in a village called Ziwa. Mm. And as I was speaking to the women, I saw one a woman who was like the age of my mom, mm. seated, looking at me, smiling, but she did not have shoes. That touched my heart, you know, mm. and she looked like she had not even had breakfast. Mm. And I just made a prayer to God that, that time, that mm. if God gives us the opportunity to uh, make it to parliament, I would go back mm. and work with the women. Mm. Of course, I came back. God was so gracious. Yeah. We made it. I, I came back, but the children were very young. Mm. So I didn't do anything, Pastor Kathy, for 12 years. You know, I kept going. The election of 2002, yeah. I had not done anything. 2007, yeah. I had not done anything. Yeah. But then it was in 2009 that mm. by God's grace, an angel walked to my office. And when I talk about an angel, this is a lady that I didn't know who called me through a friend and she walked to my office. She mm. then came to invite me to go and do a fundraising in her constituency, which I agreed. Mm. So I went, I did this Harambe, mm. but in the process we started talking and she had started doing something with the women of her constituency. Mm -hmm. So we, I asked her, we talked a lot mm. and she introduced me to what she was doing. Actually, what she was doing is the concept of table banking mm. that is actually a government concept. Mm. So when she explained to me and I went, you know, to be trained a little bit, I realized that was the thing I wanted to do with the women. Mm. So I took her, we went to Eldoret North, we had a, a small lounge, yeah. and I started training the women on table banking. Mm. So we started doing table banking with the women, you know, I trained the women, I uh, told them to go into groups, and we did all that was required. And uh, that is what actually has, has uh, that's what I've been doing with the women for the last four years. Mm. Yes. So you're helping them and raising them? Yes. What mm. we actually do is uh, we train them, we capacity build them on, yeah. uh, on, 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 on agriculture, yeah. because many of them are, uh, do agriculture, you yeah. know, they do, uh, they do small businesses here and there. Mm. And uh, what happens in table banking is that the women meet once a month, they save, and whatever they have saved, they borrow immediately. But the okay. beauty about it is yes. that it's not an MFI. All the profits go back to the women. Oh. Everything goes back to the women. So wow. as an organization, yeah. you just uh, use this organization to help them, you know, to send them uh, the field officers who sit with them. Because some of these women are illiterate, you know, they don't know how to mm. read or write. So yeah. you just send someone to help them. Yeah. So we started in 2009 mm -hmm. with very few women. Mm. Then we were just about uh, 20 groups. Yes. By the close of that year, I think we, we had a revolving fund of 60,000. But as we talk today, we yeah. have moved from uh, was Eldoret North mm. to the county of Wazingishu. Yeah. We have gone to Nandi County. We have gone to Kakamega County. Yeah. We are in Bungoma County. We are in Transoia. We are even in Nairobi. Whoa. And from just a small uh, concept, or a very good concept that the government has, you know, we have moved. And today, mm. we have about 1,530 groups Whoa. of about 25 women in every group. Yeah. And you know, this money that they keep saving and, and borrowing, you know, saving and borrowing has yeah. revolved from 60,000. And as at last Monday, when I got the report, mm. the total revolving fund, yeah. and this is not money that is in anybody's account, mm. you know, it is actually with me, it is with you, it is with another woman, you know, it is moving in the, in the, in the community. Yes. It was actually about 283 million. Uh -huh. Yes. What? Yes, you mean. What are I'm you telling talking you, about? If you look at those women, you, they actually have a story. Yeah. From 60,000? Yeah, from 60,000. to and, and I think by the end of the year, we'll, we'll hit 400 million. Oh, my. Yes. God. Yeah, oh we are going God. to be having a big Thanksgiving on the 29th of November. Yeah. And uh, I think, Pastor, I'll invite you. Amen. <laughs> And the daughters of Zion Amen. to come and see what Dr. is happening in the village. Yeah. 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 So that is oh, what wow. I do with the women. Yeah. And I really, really, really love it very much. Oh. Uh, in fact, I really thank God for the opportunity he's given me yeah. as the wife of the deputy president. Yes. Because I want to go to all the 47 counties and mm. empower women. Amen. Because um, one wow. thing I believe is that uh, yeah. nobody was born poor. 
Amen. You know, it's yeah. just that a situation that you found yourself. Yeah. And you know, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. You know, sometimes, you know, I encourage the women and tell them, you, you need to look at yourself sometimes and say, you know, even Rachel was just a village girl. She was Imagine. just born in this village. Imagine. But God has helped her. The same God that helped her is the same God that will help you. Amen. So I, I encourage them to look to look up, you know, and stop looking down, uh, you know, on, on themselves. themselves. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, we want to we want God to help us yeah. by the grace of God yeah. to go and really um, empower women using mm. this concept of table banking mm. because we've realized that it's a good concept it's a government concept it's yeah. been tested it's been tried wow. and it has really transformed uh, women. Yeah. I was in one meeting in one uh, in one women's meeting and uh, one lady said uh, you know the first uh, the first meeting they went there mm. are 25 of them she only you know saved 100 shillings. And from that 100 shillings, yeah. she didn't have anything. She went and bought eggs on a market day. Mm. So she started buying eggs yeah. and, you know, uh, selling. selling. Mm. And then uh, she started um, now hatching and she started oh. getting chicks. From the chicks, she has bought goats, from goats to cows. And now she was telling us she now wants to buy land. And it's just amazing. 100 shillings? Yes, 100 like shillings. 100 shillings, My yeah. God. So... I have seen it really transform uh, women yeah. from nothing to something. Oh yeah. So what you're saying is that anybody can make it then? Yes, I mean, exactly. honestly, a hundred shillings we trash it. Yes. You know? Yes. Oh, my. So it transforms them. Stories, yes. Mm. Their lives are transformed completely. I came to tell you, daughter of Zion, forget about your prayer partners. Oh, there comes a time when you don't need no prayer, nobody. There comes a time when you lie prostrate before the Lord and you're the only one that can call him in a way nobody else can. There comes a time when you can touch the hem of his garment when there is a crowd like this, but he knows somebody touched me. We are not going to wait until the devil attacks us. We are going to the camp of the devil to terrorize, to pull down to scatter everything that he has erected against our destiny. Time of warfare is not the time of jealousy, malice, and all kinds of murmuring. No, it's a time to be focused. I came to tell you, you need a personal God that you can say, but oh, and silence every work of Satan in your life in the name of Jesus. Uh, you know, they yeah. come maybe when we have prayed. Mm. So we pray with the children. But what we what we also do as a family is like uh, when the deputy president is around and is home, we pray with him mm. before we sleep. But the waking up in the night, it's my business. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> that one I do it myself. Yeah. 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 But what God has also helped us is that uh, we take holy communion with the deputy president every morning. Wow. <laughs> Yes. <laughs>